this time I want us to open our Bibles to Revelation chapter 4 and I would like to read the scripture verse 1 only Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1 only are we there after this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven everybody say a door was opened say it properly a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and I will show you the and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. By the grace of God, I will be sharing a word under the title How to Open the Doors of Heaven. Open doors. How to open. What are those things that can provoke the opening of the doors in heaven? What are those things that can provoke it? What are those things that can energize it? What are those things that can propel it? What are those things that can help you experience open doors? Open doors. Open doors. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercies. Thank you for gathering us into your presence. Thank you for the word you have in mind for us. Thank you for anointing me to share it. Thank you for anointing your people to receive it. And thank you for the results that we'll hereafter follow. We honor and praise you because we are expectant. Speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. We give you the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. How to open the doors of heaven. In that scripture we read, it said, after this I looked. And behold, a door was opened in heaven. An important concept which I think every believer needs to understand more perfectly and more comprehensively and more practically is the concept of heaven. When you hear many believers talk about heaven, it reveals to you that they do not understand the concept as they should. When you listen to many believers talk about heaven, you see that they talk about it in a religious way, not in a biblical way. They talk about it based on what they have heard other people say, not what they themselves have discovered about heaven itself. The word of God says in Job 5.27 Lo, this thing we have sucked it so it is. Hear it and know it for your good. Before you hold to any opinion about any biblical concept, make sure you have sucked it. And that so it is. In other words, the word they say about it is what it is. Do not hold fast to anything about any biblical concept that you have not proven. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 21 says prove all things and hold fast to the one that is true. Don't just hold fast to anything but hold fast to the one that you have discovered to be true. And I have come to realize that many children of God do not have a biblical understanding of the concept of heaven. And that is why I want to say a few things about it. The first place where heaven is mentioned in the Bible is in the first verse of the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, the word of God says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was moving. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, the Hebrew word that is used to describe heaven there is 
is the word Shamayim. S H A M A Y I M. Shamayim. Which is actually appropriately translated heavens. Heavens. In the beginning, the English Bible says God created the heaven. But the Hebrew says the heavens. What does simply mean is this. It means that heaven is, the word heaven used there refers to more than one place. Let me say it again here. There are two words that are plural in that verse 1. The first one is in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The word God there is what is a plural word Elohim. Remember the word heaven is the word Shamayim. The word Im there is the silent word for plural in Hebrew. All of us know that in the Godhead there are three persons. There is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So when they said in the beginning, God or gods created the heavens and the earth, you don't have a problem with knowing that God is a composite. There are three persons in one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But even the word heaven that is used there is a plural. What means that the heavens that God created was not just one place. It is actually three heavens. There are three heavens. In actual fact, according to scriptures, there are three parts to the concept heaven. There are three parts to the concept heaven. Just like there are three parts to the concept God. There are three parts to the concept heaven. So, are you saying to me, Brother George, that there are three heavens? Oh, yes. There are three heavens. And I will explain them one after the other. At the apex, that is the farthest point from where you and I are, there is what we call the third heaven. And Apostle Paul spoke about it. Open your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and you'll see him refer to it as the third heavens. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I want to read it directly so that you understand. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I read from verse 1 and 2. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 40 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knows it. Sought as one caught up to the third heavens. Now that third heavens is where the throne of God is. That is the headquarter of God. It is called the heaven of heavens. When you read the book of Psalms in several places, talk about the heaven of heavens. Now that is the third heaven. That is where the throne of God is. That is where God dwells. That is where the heavenly hosts are. That is the third heavens. That is the apex. That is the farthest heaven from the earth. Now if there is a third heaven, then it presupposes that there is a second heaven. So which one is the second heaven? The second heaven is known as the staric heavens. Staric heavens. S-T-A-R-I-C. Staric heavens. That is the place where the headquarter of the devil is. You see, many Christians do not know this, that the devil is not in hell yet. They say, well, they cast out the devil. They say, go to hell. No. Hell is not yet occupied by the devil. The spirits of people who die without Christ is reserved. But hell is not a place where the devil is yet. There is a second heaven immediately after the third heavens, that was the place where God cast the devil and one third of the heavenly hosts that supported his rebellion against God. That was where God cast them into. The starry heavens is where the stars are. 
that's why it's called the static heavens. That is where the headquarter of the devil is. It is not the heavens of heavens. God already cast him out of the heavens of heavens. He was there with God before in the heavens of heavens. But God had to cast him out into the static heavens. Where he will remain until Revelations 20. Revelations 20 said that I saw one angel who is going to bind the old serpent and drop him into the bottomless pit. But now, the static heavens, that is where the devil is. That is the place where principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world and wicked spirits in high places are located. The static heavens, that is the place where the devil is currently. That is the headquarter of Satan. Now, below that is what we call the atmospheric heavens. The bottom part of the atmospheric heaven is what you and I see when we go out. When you and I go out and look up there, that is the bottom part of the atmospheric heavens. So that is the first heaven. The static heaven is the second heaven. And then the heaven of heavens is the third heaven where the headquarter of God is. I want you to know that this concept needs to be very clear, especially if you are going to understand spiritual warfare. So, there is a third heaven where the throne of God is. There is a static heaven immediately below where the throne of God is. And then there is an atmospheric heaven, the bottom part of which you and I can see if we walk out there. Now, the devil is one who is in control of the static heavens. That is his headquarters. Now, the atmospheric heavens, when God created it, he gave man dominion. Remember in Genesis chapter 1, verse, verse 26, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fowls of the air, over the fishes of the water, and over every keeping that we keep on the earth. So man was supposed to be the God of this world and he was expected to be in charge of the atmospheric heavens. But when Adam sinned. And handed over the dominion. That God gave him to the devil. The devil also annexed. Activity in the atmospheric heavens. So it's like the devil is in control. As it were. Two thirds of the heavens. Is under his care. So I want you to understand that. Now. Having said that. You now know there is a third heaven. There is a second heaven. And there is a first heaven. God gave man dominion over the first heaven, but man handed over that dominion to the devil. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. The gospel is hidden. It is hidden to them who are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the glorious light of the gospel of Christ, which is the image of God, should shine upon them. Now listen to me very carefully. Most times. What you and I need is in the third heavens, not in the not in the atmospheric heaven, not in the static heaven. The storehouse of God is in the third heavens. That is where the storehouse of God is. When scripture says in Philippians 4:19, my God shall supply my need according to his riches and glory in Christ, he's talking about the third heavens. When Hebrews 4:16 says, Come boldly to the throne of grace, that you may receive grace and find mercy to help in the time of need. He's talking about the third heaven. That is the place where you and I visit. You and I have nothing to do with the static heavens. You and I have, as it were, we, we have a dominion over the atmospheric heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. But you see, it is not like God actually initially wanted us to have dominion. But you see, the devil is on a lease and very soon his lease will run out and man will again will be returned to the place of honor. So what you and I need Ephesians 1 3 says, Blessed be God who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. That's the third heaven in Christ. Psalm 68 verse 19 says, It tells us that there is, a, there is a storehouse there in the third heavens. So, what you and I need is in the third heavens. But where we need it is on the earth. And so, if what we need is in the third heavens and where we need is on the earth, there is always the need to create a pathway between the third heavens and the earth. There is always a need for there to be a pathway. Many times when you and I pray and our prayers get to heaven, 
the third heavens. And God sends the answer. The static heavens occupant resists the emissaries of God. You remember in the days of Daniel, you can read this in Daniel chapter 10. God's word tells us that the, from the day that Daniel prayed, his words were heard. But when the answer was coming, there were these powers in the static heavens that withstood the messenger that was bringing the answer and therefore delayed the coming of the answer for 21 days. So, the third heavens is what where we need is. Where we want to use it is here on earth. And so, that thing needs to pass through the static heavens, through the apostolic heavens, to get to us here on earth. And one thing the devil will always do is that he will always try to resist, always try to obstruct, always try to delay, always try to make it impossible for that answer and that reality to come into our experience here on earth. And so there is something that is necessary that must happen in heaven. And that is that a door be opened. That door links the third heaven to the earth. Whereby what is ordained in the third heavens can now be established on earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. In heaven is already settled. Forever or that what is settled in heaven. But it's not settled on the earth. It has to come to the earth for us to experience it. And for it to come, then a door needs to be opened. So when we are talking about open door in heaven, we are talking about something that links the third heavens with the earth. Something that makes it possible. For the resources in the third heavens that is yours and mine to come to the earth for us to experience it. And that's where the scripture here, Revelation chapter 4, says it very clearly. After this I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said, Come ye hither, and I will show thee things which must be, must be. Once the door is opened in heaven, it links to the earth, and so what is already established in heaven can become reality on the earth. So there is always a need for the door to open. That is why you must know the things that can make it possible for the door to be opened. If you don't know what to do to get the door opened, you will stay under the third heavens and never have the things that are yours, which are in the third heavens, because no door has been opened to connect you. You remember in Genesis 28, you can go through this later, I will say a few things later about it, from verse 12 to 19. When Jacob left his father's house and was on his way, as it were, to Laban, where he was going to stay for some years, God's word told us that he slept in a particular place. And when he slept in that particular place, what was he that he saw? He saw the heavens opened. And he saw something that looked like a ladder connecting the third heaven resources to the earth. Something that now stole him. He saw angels ascending and descending. Angels were going through the door. They were coming from heavens of heavens. With what will make Jacob's life meaningful. And what will bring the purpose of God to pass in his life. And they were going through the door. So that door need to be opened. And that is why as a child of God. You need to know what it takes. For the door in heaven to be opened. In Psalm 78, verse 23, God's word tells us, he said that the means through which God fed the children of Israel for 40 years, without taking an offering, without opening a bakery, without killing any cow, without having sauce to, 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 to cook the food, was through the door that was open in heaven. Open your Bibles to Psalm 73. I want us to read it together. So you know there is something called a door. Door of heaven. Door gives us entrance. God give, door gives us passage. God door gives us access. 
Now look at it. Psalm 73. Now I read from verse 22. He said, because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation, though he had commanded the cloud from above and opened the doors of heaven and had rained down manna upon them to eat. So the manna was passing through what? The door. He opened the door of heaven and laid manna. There was no way manna can come. There is no way your supply can get to you without passing through a door. There has to be a door. And the door has to be open. That is why you and I need to know the things that open the door. The things that provoke the opening of the door. So that according to Revelation, I said, come, I will show you things that must be hereafter. So the door is important. So in this month of open doors, you need to look at it from a different angle. What you need is in the third heavens. Your wife is there. Your husband is there. Your child is there. Your job is there. Blessed be God who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. In heavenly places. They are in heavenly places. They are in spiritual forms. But they need to come down. James 1.17 says every good gift. Every, not some, not most. Every good gift. And every perfect gift is from above. Not the static heavens. It's from above. The storehouse in heaven of heaven. And the comet down. Through what? The door. From the father of light. With whom there is no variableness. Neither any shadow of turn. If the door is not open. You can't get the supply. It takes the door opening. There was no way manna would have come. For 40 unbroken years. If there was no door that was open. And so one of the things. You and I need to have eyes to see. He said. He said. He said. He said, he said to me. Look. He said he looked and he beheld and there was a door. So your eyes must be keen to see the door open. In fact, many times when I want to pray, I don't just hit the floor. I, I, I kneel down. I enter his gate with thanksgiving. I enter his door, his cup with praise. I'm thankful. I bless his name. And I have to make sure that I have been able to enter into the third heavens. Because the Bible says, come boldly to the throne. The throne is in the third heavens. I must pass through. And that is why I ask for forgiveness of sins. The things that you say, I did not say. The things that you not say, I should not say. All those things, I have to leave them out. And then I'm able to pass through the static heavens. I'm able to pass through the, 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 the atmospheric heavens. And then I get into the throne room. And then I may find the throne before I begin to speak. So a door needs to be opened. And that is why this month what we are doing is getting doors open. You see, once the door is open, miracles become common. Once the door is open, intervention of God in the ordinary course of our lives are very, very common. Now let me say this to you. There are two kinds of heaven over the head of everybody. It's either a closed heaven or an open heaven. A closed heaven or an open heaven. A closed heaven or an open heaven. Those are the two kinds of heaven. Now, a person, a family, a community or nation can experience reduced, limited, or no divine intervention on their behalf on the earth in their affairs is an indication of a closed heaven. When divine intervention in the ordinary course of your life is not prominent, is not clear, is not vivid, is not constant, is not great then it means you have been operating under a closed heaven. The heavens could be closed. Just like in the natural, the heavens can be closed. There will be no rain. There will be no dew. In the spiritual, the heavens can be closed. Why? Because you have not learned how to operate to open the door. The fact that the blessing is there in heavenly places does not mean you are going to experience it here on earth. There are many Christians who are not experiencing anything here on earth. You are preaching under a close heaven. Let me give you some of the evidences of somebody you are preaching under a close heaven. Indications of a close heaven include the following. Months or years without tangible blessing or testimony of divine help. No outstanding experience. No supernatural manifestation. Months or years where there is nothing to talk about. It's an, it's an evidence of a closed heaven. Unending hardship. Despite prayer and fasting. Hardship. You have this hardship. Tough and rough. 
I start prayer and fasting. Hardship does not cease. Things have not changed. It's an indication of a close heaven. There are women who are praying under a close heaven seeking for a life partner. And there is no call. There is no toe. There is no hello. There is no call. There is no how are you doing. The heavens is closed. And you see, for as long as they just keep going like that, they will just grow old. 50, 60, 70, there will be nobody. Not because there is nothing provided for them in heavenly places. There is. But because they have not learned how to pry the door open. I've been able to help so many families. I've been able to help so many individuals. I've been able to help many businessmen to be able to do what they need to do for the heavens to be open. I'm going to share a few things, few things with you today. How to get the door open. How to link my, how I can begin to have divine intervention on a constant basis. On ending hardship, despite prayer and fasting. Much labor, little results. It's an indication of a close heaven. You are walking like an elephant, you are eating like an ant. You have nothing to show for the efforts, for the long hours, for the going up and down, for the travels, for the sacrifice. Much labor, little profit. Affliction of all sorts, trouble, constant satanic attack. It's an indication of a close heaven. Whenever there is a reduced, limited, or no divine intervention in our lives, then it means we are operating under a heaven that is closed. No door in heaven has been opened that link us, link us to what we want, which is already provided for in heavenly places. You see, these things are already there. I remember years ago, God took me on a vision and I went to heaven. I mean, I'm not going to dramatize it. I write a book. I saw heaven. No, 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 no. It's not a story. Paul said, look, I can't even remember whether in the flesh or out of the flesh. I cannot know. God knows. He didn't go into and glamorize it. And I remember they took me to a particular place that was like a big storehouse. I saw eyes. I saw liver. I saw kidney. I saw legs. I saw wombs. I saw so many things there on display. And you see like when you go to Volkswagen and you go to their storehouse, you see so many parts of Volkswagen on display. And look, it's one of the most frightening things I've ever seen. Eyes, hands, legs, limbs, scrotums, wombs, various parts, lungs, liver, everything packed in their various places. And I asked a question, and it was scripture that came to me while I was there, that these are the loads of blessings that belong to many people here on earth, which have not been accessed because there is no door that leads them to that thing. No door. No door. Angel ascending and descending. Jesus told some of the young men that met him in the early days of his ministry in John chapter 1. He told them in verse 50, 51, he said, you will see great things. He said, you will see angels ascending and descending. He operated under an open heaven. An open heaven simply refers to a situation where there is a constant intervention and presence and evidence that heaven is touching us on your behalf. Heaven is touching us on your behalf. So let me go on here and let me go on and say this again. So it's very important for us to know that another evidence or indication of a closed heaven when there are no new developments, stagnation, things have remained the same way. No new things to point to. What has been is what has been. The same house, the same clothes, the same car. There is nothing new. Because God is a God of new things. Revelation 21 verse 5. He said, behold, I make all things new. Romans 6 4. He said, he wants us to, to, live, to live in newness of life. Romans 7 6. He wants us to serve in newness of spirit. Isaiah 2 9. Behold, the former things have come to pass. New things do I declare. So what is God saying? He wants us to experience new things. But when there are no new developments, you ask them how now? After. Now, so, so, now, that's an indication you are praying under a close heaven. And that is why this month is a month that should move you forward. A month that will link you to that thing, that thing that has been written against your name, that is your portion, that is against your name, that you desire, that you seek, that is yours. That is the point of, of, of what we are talking about. That's the essence of this month. It is to open up, to link you up. 
and that is why we are sharing some of the things we are sharing so that it can it can galvanize you and propel you and challenge you and motivate you so that you can do what you need to do go where you need to go and exercise yourself as much as is necessary to get the door open because the door needs to be open and God has already promised us in Matthew 16 19 he said and I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of the kingdom not to the kingdom but the keys of the kingdom you see when you have the keys of the kingdom then you will open and no man can shut that is why he, why he said to us in Revelation 3 8 I shut before you an open door no man can shut it once you know how to get the door open no man can shut it no man can shut it no man by whatever they think or do can shut the door they couldn't shut the door against Joseph. They couldn't shut the door against David. They couldn't shut the door. They couldn't shut the door. But if care is not taken and you did not do the right thing, you could shut the door in your own face. No new development. Nothing green. Nothing fresh. Staleness. Everything is the way they have been. Decay, smell, stench, stagnation. Another evidence of a, a close heaven is frustration of plan. No achievement. Business failure. Academic abortion. Losing money. Wastage of all types. All of these are many more evidences of a close heaven. When there is limited or reduced or no evidence of divine intervention in the course of our life. Now, uh, does God want, want us to live another kind of a life? No. Does, is that the kind of heaven God wants us to live? No. God wants us to operate under an open heaven. But you and I need to learn the things that can keep that door open. and That can open that door and keep it open. Because unless you know the things that can get the door open and keep it open, it will be frustration galore. Not because God has ordained you for destruction. God has not ordained us for destruction. His thoughts towards us are thoughts of good and not of evil. To give up the future and hope. But he said to this man, and I saw a door was opened in heaven. And the voice of him that spoke with me says, come, I will show you things that must be. With the door open, it must be. It must be. Hereafter. When the door was opened in the wilderness, food came every day. Food came every day. Victory came every day. Success came every day. Progress came every day. Things started happening every day. Because God is a daily God. Deuteronomy 33, 25. As your day is, so shall be your strength. In the Bible, you see several people who experience open heavens. Or several places where people experience open heavens. Let me give you at least six or seven of them. The first person that experienced an open heaven is... The, 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 uh, Jacob Genesis 28 verse 12 to 19 open heaven angels ascending descending and God spoke to him in verse 15 he said I will not leave you until I have done to you everything that I have planned for you the second person that experienced an open heaven Ezekiel Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 and it came to pass in the following month, in the following year, so and so, I was with the captive by the river of seas, and I saw the heavens open. These people saw the heavens open. If they saw the heavens open, God is no respecter of persons. The same God who opened the heavens for them, opened the heaven for you. Number three, Jesus Christ's ministry never started until the heavens opened. Matthew 3.16 Luke chapter 3 verse 21 Mark 1.10 The Bible said that it came to pass as he finished being baptized as he came out of the water the heavens opened. Look, it is useless to have a ministry under a closed heaven. But some churches are under a closed heaven. Some ministries are under a closed heaven. Some ministers are under a closed heaven. In other words, there is not, you won't see supply. You won't see things coming. You won't see freshness. You won't see progress. You won't see expansion. You won't see something that will delight you. Something that will excite you. Something that will make you glad. When you are present now in open heaven, you have reason to rejoice and be glad. 
Psalm 70 verse 4, Psalm 40 verse 16. Let them that seek you rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad. 4 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16. Rejoice evermore. Philippians 4 4. Rejoice in the Lord. Again and I say rejoice. Psalm 8, 118 verse 5, 15 16. He said, the voice and gladness and rejoicing is had in the tabernacle of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord dwells violently. The right hand of the Lord is exhausted. I shall not die. Verse 17. I shall not die but live to declare the good works of God. Jesus' ministry never started until the heavens opened. He never ever tried to do anything until the heavens opened. If you try to start a ministry without open heaven, you will labor for many years and not be able to parent. Every year it will be a struggle to parent. Every year it will be a struggle to parent. To be able to have a car that you can fuel, it will be tough and rough. Not because it is not ministry, but because there are certain things that guarantee an open heaven that you don't have, that you have not put in place. And you see ministries are like that. Many ministries are like that. And they will raise by what money, money for microphone. My God, will God give you a message and not give you a means to speak it out? Raise ordinary money for accommodation, pastor's house, ordinary money for, for, I'm talking about the basics of ministry. And yet there is nothing. Close to heaven. That ministry should be shot. Because it's operating. You know? Jesus never liked all those things in the days when he walked the earth. Paul never liked all those things in the way when he walked the earth. He said, uh, he said he had everything. I have all things and abound. That was his testimony. Because he operated that are on open heaven. Stephen operated that are open heaven. In Acts chapter 7, verse 56, the Bible said that we are stoning him and he was calling upon God. He said, I saw the heavens open and I saw Jesus standing. You see that? He saw the heavens open and Jesus was standing. Those who are stoning him did not see what he saw. He saw the heavens open, which was similar to Revelation 4.1. I saw the heavens open. So there is something called an open heaven. An open heaven simply means a door in heaven links heaven resources to where you are. Put heaven resources and intervention at your court, back and call. Make heaven's resources available to you commonly. Recently somebody was asking me, how does it cost you when you travel? How much is your ticket? I say about 2 million naira for each ticket. He said, ah! Where do you get that from? Open heaven. When heaven is open, he does not care where you live. There will be a connection. I went to a church in Ottawa. I sat down like that in the church. A man tapped me on the back. He said, hello. I said, yes. He said, I'm a pastor in my church. I just came to this place today to be part of this program. I said, that's good. He said, I came here just to tell you that God says I should buy you seven first class tickets to anywhere in the world you want to go to. Now that is open heaven. Now the same, in that same place, there are probably people who are trying to change suits and nothing is there. So what is it that makes the heaven open? That is the essence of what I'm saying. A door was open. That door must be open because that door is for access to the resource that heaven has to offer. Jacob was running away like a fugitive, but the door was open. Angel ascending, descending. The Bible said ascending, descending. Not descending and ascending. Ascending. First, taking his request to heaven, bringing the supply to the earth. Taking his request to heaven, he said, wow, this is the house of God and this is the gate of heaven. You live in the lonely and it's the gate of heaven. On the natural surface, it's not the gate to anywhere. It's a civil service center. It's a place where people cannot probably even have the basic things of life. The cars on the streets are old and raggy and ragged. But here you are, angels ascending and descending. Why? Open door. And that is why we are talking about stop laboring under a closed heaven. If the door is not open, stop what you are doing and do something else. God has not ordained to use you as an example of failure. He has not set you up for shame. 
He has not raised you up as an example of what does not work. These people have found for myself. Isaiah 4, 3, 21. They will show forth my praise. People will like me when they see the results in their lives. What are you saying, George? Stephen, Jesus, Ezekiel, Peter, even experienced an open heaven. Peter, before his ministry started. The real ministry of Peter started in Acts 10. The Bible says in Acts 10, 11, the heavens were open and God let down a sheet with four corners and every man of beast was in that. God was saying to him, this is how far your ministry will go. These are the people you are going to touch. And he was being religious. He didn't understand it well. Or oh, he did some things right. Or else that would never have happened. The disciples experienced an open heaven on the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 and 6. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. As of a rush, there came a sound from heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind. And something came down, touched the people's eyes, and then their life became supernatural. That's what open heaven is about. Then Jesus warned them. Don't go out in ministry until the heaven is open. Don't stop until the heaven is open. I never tried ministry until I knew the heavens were open. Jesus never tried ministry until he knew the heavens were open. The apostles never tried ministry. They were in one place for days. They didn't say I have five sermons and I have two suits and I have three shoes and I have Drake's Bible and uh, Matthew Henry's coming. Okay, let's go to ministry. They had to wait. The heavens open. A sound came from heaven. As a rushing mighty wind descended into the place where they were. Cloving tongues like a of fire appeared. You see, even if you are selling the chart card and there is open heaven over it, you make money. You are selling a bear at 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 a wa going. And the heavens open, you make it. But God does not order for what he did not pay for. I mean, God does not pay for. What he did not order for. There must, be a, there must be a door open. All your efforts must to make sure the door is open. That is what you need to do. That is what you need to exert yourself on. Whether it's fish you are selling, or the church card you are selling, or you work in an organization, the heaven's door, you must make sure whatever is necessary for you to put in place. For the door to open and then you know the door is open. You see, when the door is open, if we work in any organization, promotion will come in unusual ways. They will send you on courses and give you allowances that you did not even bargain for. They will oppress you with the blessing of God. One young man was telling me recently, he said, oh, the way they are sending me around the world, I'm tired of it. He was sending him around allowances, courses. And there were other people in that same organization in the same post who are not being sent anywhere. He had something they did not have. So I told him, be careful. Don't close the door with your mouth. I said before you an open door. I put the key of David on your shoulder. I open no man can shut. When the door is open, no matter who criticizes you and when they do it, it cannot stop it. I have been criticized by experts. But it has never stopped me. Not even one hair of my head has perished. Because of what? They, because the most important thing is for me to have an open door. And once I know it, she can now. She can now. And I will not struggle with those who don't. If you don't have an open door, it's not my fault. You need to know how to get it. Ezekiel had it. Jesus had it. Stephen had it. Peter had it. The apostles had it. John, the revelation, revelator, had it. I saw, he said, heavens, a door open in heaven. Now, who opened that door? It is God. Now, if God opened the door, can anybody shut it? He said, I saw the door open. Don't say I opened the door. I saw the door open in heaven. And I heard somebody like a voice of trumpet saying to me, come up hither and I will show you things that must be hereafter. Oh, buddy. Nobody can stop it. Nobody can hinder it. Nobody can slow you down. When Jesus said yes, nobody to solve a man in his court, the Lord does not approve. Who is it that said that it coming to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? 
crucial thing is for heavens to be open. Now quickly I want to share with you things that get the door open. I will build on it next Sunday but let me share about five of them. Today things that get it up. Flick the door open. Bagada. Which if you have you will operate under open. Open heaven means open door that links where you are to heaven's resources that you desire. That's all. It shall come to pass said, if you shall diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, that these blessings will run after you and overtake you. Such things don't happen accidentally. The first thing that get the door open, number one, your father's blessing. Your father's blessing. Many children are laboring because they are orphaned spiritually. Whether you are a businessman or you are a professional or you are a student, you need your father's blessing. What was it that opened heaven for Jacob? Jacob was a thief. His name is called Jacob. A thief, a rogue, a supplanter, a, 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 a squadrier. But there was something he had. His father blessed him. His father blessed him. Genesis 27 verse 4. Genesis 27 verse Genesis 27 verse 7. Genesis 27 verse 27. Genesis 28 verse 1. The Bible says the father of Jacob blessed him. It was after he blessed him in verse 1 of Genesis 28. That what happened in verse 12 to 19 happened. And I saw the heavens open. An agent ascending. And Jacob did not know how that happened. It was the father who had superior authority from God. Who... Fathers need to open the door for children. Whether in ministry or in life. You need a father who can open the door for you. Hebrews 7.7 7, The less is blessed by the better. First Chronicles 16 verse 2 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 18 He said and David blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Jacob knew what it is for fathers to bless and open door. Jacob with his own mouth, he changed the birth order of Ephraim and Ephraim and Manasseh. Manasseh was the firstborn of Joseph. Ephraim was the secondborn of Joseph. Jacob with his mouth, with his mouth, he opened a wider door for Ephraim than Manasseh. To the point that Manasseh as a tribe settled on this side of Jordan, Ephraim entered into the promised land through father's blessing. Jacob determined how all the children, Reuben, God, Judah, will produce in life through the blessing. Fathers use their mouth to shut the heavens or to open it. <laughs> Number 16. Moses, the father of Israel, shut the door in the face of that Korah and Abiran and caused them to go down alive into the ground. Shouting as they go, they descended into a lost eternity under the ground. But the same Moses, Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 1, he blessed tribe after tribe. Blessed tribe after tribe. You need your father's blessing. There are those whom God has commanded to bless by reason of their position and authority. When they open their mouth and bless you, you are blessed. I remember my son for so many years ago, Reverend Victor. He was in this ministry, he served very well. But he left unceremoniously. And after he left, he told me this. He struggled, go to one embassy after another embassy, trying to get visa to go out of the country. In some embassies, they gave him in the embassies that matter, they did not give him visa. And I remember after we reconciled, I went to his church. I said only one thing. I said from today, I make you a citizen of the world. From that day till today, no place where they refuse him visa anymore. The world has become... That is what fathers do for their children. Behold, I am the children the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders. Fathers are in authority. When they are in authority, they use their authority well. That is one way they open the window for you. They open, they open, they open the door for you. Because your father has gone through it, he can speak over your life. And it will be so. 
Genesis 48, 29, the Bible said, God, I mean, Jacob blessed all of the children according to their blessing. To the point that what happened to every one of them was based on what Jacob said. Solomon blessed also. First Kings chapter 8, verse 14. First Kings chapter 8, verse 55. He said that Solomon blessed the people in the name of the Lord. God commanded Moses to tell Aaron, Numbers chapter 6, verse 26 to the end, that one of the things they need to do is to make sure they bless. The word bless means to empower. Your father may not have silver or gold, but when he opens his mouth in satisfaction and bless you, the door opens. The door to progress, the door to joy, the door to greatness. I went to a pastor's church. Him and his wife have tried to have a baby for 11 years. No baby at all. I asked the pastor, I said, did the father of this woman give, did the father of this woman give this woman out in marriage to you? He said, no. He said, the father said, I have not given you this woman and no matter how far you go, you come back. That's all. And the woman and the man tried to have a baby. No baby. They eventually brought the man to me. I said, I wanted to see the man. They should go and tell him. I want to see him. They brought him. The man was almost, almost 110 years old. He came like this. I said, Daddy, please, please. Biko, thank you. Just say something. He said, you have run until you cannot run anymore. He said, today I say, I free you. You will be male, you will give female, you will have enough to take care of them. And you will eat in plenty and greatness will not be far from you. That's all. Two weeks later, the man died. The pastor's wife got pregnant. Nothing, no fertility drug, no injection, no hospital bill anymore, nothing. Just the father's place. Connect. He opened the door. The door that had been shut opened. I have set a key of David Isaiah 2022 upon that shoulder. You will open. No man can shut. I told one of our young men recently, I said, you are going, you are about to do this, this, I said, when you do it, you will regret it until you come back here to Ilone. Then I will release you. He ran away. Recently he's been begging. Ah, Baba, I've not been able to see anything. Nothing is happening. The door is shut. The door is shut. If you continue like that, that's how you're going to continue until you have nothing to show for it. If you can't move forward, remember the place from when that has fallen? Repent! Your father may not even talk. But he has a key. Except he's not your real father. Except he did not begot you in the gospel. Except he did not labor over you. Except he is not the person that God used to give your life a meaning. If he is. <laughs> cause is the opposite of blessing. To bless means to empower. To cause means to introduce failure mechanisms into something so that you don't work. Things that get the door open. Father's blessing. Our pastors. Our leaders. Our natural parents. Never ever invoke the causes of your natural parents. They do not carry the sword in vain. Let every soul be subject to higher powers. Romans 13 verse 1. There is no power that be except the name of God. Let me say this to you. When Jacob with his own mouth told Laban that anybody who have stolen Laban's graven image should die. You know Jacob said that. Jacob said he did not know that Rachel had stolen the image. Why Rachel stole it, I don't know. Some young boys will go into their father's room because they see an image there or they see charm. Then you carry it. Oh, Lord, for you, Bagbakuba. Two months in cutting sin law. But to bad, they told Lamont, you better. The richest stole the man's gods. And when the man came looking for the gods, because Jacob had authority over his wife in the domestic arrangement. He said, anybody that you see it with, let them die. He did not know that he killed his wife with his own mouth. 
when the child was going to have a baby, what did he do? Benoni, Benjamin. The Bible said she, she labored, she labored, and she died in the process. Who killed her? The person that had authority. Who used the authority? Who said, if anybody here is with your God, let the person die the death? Those who are in authority over us. People don't know this. Unbelievers know the power and authority that is invested in a man of God even more than believers. Since the political thing has been in place, so many, 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 many people have said, Sir, just bless me. Bless me. Bless me, please. Bless me, please. Bless me, please. When the children of Israel were about to leave Egypt, Pharaoh said to them in Exodus 12, 32, Go, you and your children, carry everything that I have. Go. He said, but remember Moses to bless me. He realized the authority in his superior leader. How do I open it? The father's blessing. You want to start a business, your father does not know about it. You can only achieve as your natural wisdom can carry you. You need higher powers that can push you forward and open the door for you. You know the extent that some people go just for me to say two words about their work, two words about their business, two words before they resume all over the world. They call me. Sir, I just got a job. Please bless me. Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. It opens the door. There are certain doors you are standing in front there is no grace you have to open that door. That door can only be opened for you by father figures. The natural father. That's why in the Bible days, Esau and Jacob were struggling for their father's blessing. If it is not important, why are they fighting for it? Why did Jacob steal it from Esau? Esau was blessed too, but could that be? Number two. Things that get the door open. Getting the timing right. When you get the timing for something right, it opens the door of heaven. Ecclesiastes 3.1 To everything there is a time and a season to every purpose under the heavens. Ecclesiastes 3.11 He has made all things beautiful in his time. Galatians 4.2 He is under tutors and governor. Until the time appointed for the father. Psalm 102 verse 13. Thou shall arise and have favor upon Zion. For the time to favor her has come. When you get the timing right. The door in heaven opens. Some people go out too early. So the door is still shut. They go out too early. Psalm 16 verse 4. Their sorrows will be multiplied. Who hasten after another God? Proverbs 29.20 Says that a man hasten his words. There is more hope for a fool than for him. Isaiah 28.16 He says, Behold, I have laid Isaiah for a foundation, a stone, a tri stone, a precious corner stone. He that believes shall not make haste. Thou shalt arise and have favor upon Zion for the time to favor her. Jesus heaven opened because he got the time right. I got the time right. I had to wait for the time to come. Jesus told his mother, woman, what do I have to do with thee? My time has not come. John 7, 6. He said, that's for you. Your time is always, he said, but my time has not come. Get the timing right. The The door in heaven will open. You know when a farmer gets the time to plant a crop right, half of the battle is won. Harvest is guaranteed when you get the timing right. When you get the timing wrong, good seeds will yield you no harvest. Good seeds. It's not how sincere you are. You may be sincerely wrong. You are out of time. You are not in your time. Psalm 105 verse 19. He said until the time came for Joseph, he stayed in prison. To everything there's a time, getting the timing right. There's something called the appointed time. 
when Jesus' ministry started, two things he said. Mark 1.15, Matthew 4.17. He said, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. He went to be baptized in water. He came out. The heavens opened. Bagada. Why would it not open? He got the timing right. He knew when it was going to be. He knew where it was going to be. And God now spoke. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Of course, the heaven opened now. The Bible said the heavens opened. And then God spoke. When the heavens opened in Revelation chapter 4 verse 1, there was a voice. There is going to be a voice of attestation. A voice of attestation. People who invite me at times, I say, how did you get to know about me? They say, everybody is saying you are the one who can do it for us. Everybody is saying it. Why? That is an open heaven. There are others who can preach probably better. There are others who have been preaching probably longer. But why not them? There is nobody that is difficult to challenge that somebody who is operating on an open heaven. It's very difficult. It will be impossible for you to overwhelm them. Anything you do, we keep pushing them forward. Anything you do, Joseph, everything they did, he was pushing the man forward. They sold him into slavery, it was forward. They, 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 they lied against him and thrown him into prison, it was forward. Everything they did, it was what? Forward. Why? Open Every mistake becomes a new style. <laughs> because the heaven is open. Even some things that is mistake becomes something they'll begin to copy. Heaven's open. When I heard that music, Yahuze, I said, What's in this song? Nothing is in it. Yahuze, 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 I will come wash out, yeah, yeah, I will come wash out. I said, What's it? But there is something. There is something about it. Something about it. When somebody's time comes, it does not matter whether it looks good or not. When he gets the timing right, forget about it. It'll be the best thing that ever happened in that place. And I saw a door open in heaven. I saw a door open in heaven. Isaiah 55 verse 6. Seek it the Lord when he can be found. I preach two messages. You probably get a secret to a beautiful life. And then you can get that too. Those messages talk about the value and the precision of right time. Gehazi got the time wrong. That's why he became a leper. And then became a storyteller. He was one telling story in 2 Kings chapter 8. To the king. He had become a storyteller. He got the time wrong. Because when Elisha accosted him, Elisha said, is it time to be taken off? Is it time? He was a training minister. His own time was going to come. Every day minister have your day. But if you want to graduate before your day, leprosy. Ministerial leprosy. You finish training and then you carry ministerial leprosy. Everybody says, yeah, 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 yeah. You see, in Bible days when somebody is a leper, when he's going, he'll be saying, Lamen, Lamen, we make sound clean. Everybody will be laughing. They'll be running away from him. That's what happens. You carry ministry, you go out before your time. Some young men years ago here, Remember a young one who was, who was probably Vincent or somebody that is his name. He's somewhere in the east. He was, he was saying, he listen that, hey, he wants me to lay hands. I said, for what? Lay me on you. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Be no part. You got the timing wrong. A woman who wants to have a baby needs to get the timing wrong right. It makes pregnancy easier. There are some couples who are trying to have children. But they get the timing wrong. The man does not live around. So whenever he's around, the woman is not ovulating. And whenever the woman is ovulating, the man is not around. They get it. One one tassi around, one tassi around. One of the questions he kisses you. He got the timing wrong. The possibility of a woman taking in is heightened by right timing. You must strike the high on when it is hot. When I was producing children, I did not just play go, play shots anyhow. So everything there's a time. Don't be too much in a hurry. Get the right timing. Number three. How can I get the door open? A right heart. A right heart. Create in me a clean heart. 
a clean heart will open the door. Not an evil heart. If a man shall purge himself of these things, then shall he become a vessel of honor. Right motives. Right heart. Second Chronicles 16 verse 9. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole heart to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are perfect. A right heart. If you are in it for the money or the glory, the heavens will shut. It will shut. There are ministries and ministers who used to have a right heart. The heavens opened, so many things fell. But the heart has since changed. What you are seeing is the last days of a dying ministry. It is still there because when the heart was right, God showed me something. It was so shocked when he showed this. Point. God said before Saul became king, one of the things that God changed was his heart. 1 Samuel 10, 9. God gave Saul what? A new heart. Solomon too. God had to give a Solomon a new heart. But do you know God did not give David a new heart? Why? He had a right heart. He gave Solomon a new heart. First king. And the new heart, if the new heart is subjected to abuse, like the former heart, it becomes as useless as the former heart that God gave him. That God took out and gave him another one. God showed me that yesterday. He said, you know, I gave Saul a new heart. He said, I had to do open heart surgery on him before he could start. But David, 1 Samuel 13, 14, at 13, 22, was a man after my heart. Eleni Biokami, he was a man. The same heart I had, the same heart he had. So there was no need for heart transfusion for David. But Saul needed a new heart. Solomon needed a new heart. Your heart will close the heavens. Just like your heart will open. The place where God is looking at is your heart. Proverbs 23, 26. My son, give me your heart. Proverbs 4, 23. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of them are the issues of life. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. 1 Samuel 16, 7. For the Lord does not see the way man see it. Man is looking at the outward. God is looking at the heart. That is what opens the door. That is what opens the door. Your heart. If you have a heart for the work, more than for the glory, the door opens. If you have a heart for the money, for the glory, more than the work. Uh -huh. What God has for us is not the glory, it's not the name, it is the work. Isaiah 40, 13. Isaiah 62, 11. He said, my reward is with me and my work is before me. You must take more interest in the work than in the title. Isaiah 40, 40, 10. My reward is with me. So get it right. Heart. Heart. Job 23 verse 16. God make it my heart soft. <laughs> I remember the years ago one of our young men came to me and said, ah! Say, Baba Kali Mini Yini. Ciao. Yay. Mati Dean. Kasi Luebo. What do you see now? You see, a me con here, you walk on me. Along to you, okay. Koti Lord, because I could have Kulogana. The person who said this, Koti Logana. He said, I would just buy 500 Mercedes Benz Shagarista. We, and then I would put a big horn on it. And then I will have customized split number. The word. I see, I understand. He has not gone to Ghana. The person who said that to me. Ah, recently I saw, I said, ah, Papa, it is simple, Jew. Oh, yeah. You see, the heart. The heart. There was a young boy in the Bible known as Uziah. The Bible said, for as long as he served the Lord, 2 Chronicles 26, verse 5. For as long as he served the Lord, God made what he did to prosper. 
verse 15, 16, his heart was lifted up in him to the destruction. He was supposed to be a king. He entered into the office of a prophet and he became a leper. The heaven shot. Ministry that thrived for years. The heaven shot. Right heart. Creating me a clean heart. That is one thing I keep doing. I always try to get my heart right. I always talk about, I always have to get my heart right. I always say, Lord, cleanse my heart. Search me, oh Lord, I know my heart. Try me, I know my reins. If there is any wicked way in me, God don't give me something I can never handle in terms of riches or honor. Don't expose me too much to what will destroy me. I don't want it. My heart. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold, as precious silver. I am always working on my heart. Because I know what is giving me the heaven, the door, is the heart. The door to the nations have remained open because the heart is light. If the heart changes, the door closes. Chicken, huh? It's very simple. What does it take God? There is nobody God cannot replace. If you become too important for God and your heart is uplifted, he whose heart is lifted up in him is not right. I'm the one making this happen. That's what happened to Moses. He went and prayed to the children of Israel. God said, talk to the rock. He went and spoke to the rock. And he, he, he went and spoke to the people and struck the rock. God said, speak to the rock, not the people. He said, shall we bring water always for you? Huh? Hey, shall we? Iwo. Iwo kololo. Shall we? Iwo. Heaven shot. You will not enter the promised land. That's all. After 40 years of labor, nothing to show for it. The door in heaven was shut. The heaven said, come and I will show you what shall be hereafter. Doors like that can close to businessmen. Can close to marriage. Some sisters, I want to find you. If a brother come, I will be said, I say, what? Ele, oti da gwadjo. Oti bo tuwa tuwa. Ele, ah, gajere. Or wajere ri tanku ni. Tari nye shebi alaba hon. Ele nko, ah, oh, ri benwe she feni bi. Bi modu. Ele nko, ah, emi si, emi soko. Isha, oh, koma nisha lawa. And gradually, you are doing what? The door is, and suddenly the door shut, oh, pari nye. He said, I opened, no man can shut, and I shut. No man can open. When he shut the door against Saul, when his motive changed, Saul became jealous. You got the post not by your hand, you got the post not by your argument, you got the post not by sword. Now somebody that God has raised up for his own turn and his own time, you became evil-hearted towards him. The Lord shut the door, and nobody could open it. There was no vision, no dream. Nothing again from God. Oh dear. Number, number four. I'll give you five of the seven. So that when I write the book, you buy it. <laughs> what are those things that open the door? Your open hands. Has a way of ensuring open door. Open hands. Has a way of ensuring open door. Door. If you are stingy and miserly in your relationship with God and his people, the door in heaven to abundance does not open. He says, bring ye your tithes and offering to my storehouse, there may be meat in my house. Now prove me now here with, if I will not open the windows of heaven. Open hand. A man's gift. Do you know this? Practice this. If you go to a particular place and whenever you go there, you have 500 naira and you give everybody. Messenger, secretary, 500 naira, 500 naira. Everybody, you share it. And then you say, I want to see money here. 
Even when the manager is around, say, "Who open what? Who go and tell manager you are here?" A man's gift will open. A man's gift will open the door. A man's gift. Proverbs thirteen sixteen. A man's gift has a way of opening the door for him and bring it before kings and not before men. Be generous towards God. Be generous towards anything that is God. Somebody was asking me. He said, sir, let me ask you. I just want to ask you. Is it every time that there is offering you are always giving? I look at you. This was in Bible school class. Not about two Saturdays ago. I was in Bible school class. Ha! He said, excuse me, excuse me. This tight thing, I'm not, I'm not, I don't understand. Every time you give, give, give. I always see you giving. I say, I never t- get tired giving. He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He shall soweth bountifully. Shall reap bountifully. The liberal soul shall be made fat. Heaven's door is open to those who maintain God's God's storehouse. For those who rob God, he said, I curse you with a curse. If man curses you, God will lift it. If God curses you, who can lift it? Open hand as a way of ensuring open doors. Let me say this to you. There was a man in the Bible as Colinius. Do you know that this man was just praying and fasting? He was wrong. Oh. The way he was fasting and he was praying. But when God saw how sincere he was and the offering he was given, Acts 10 4, he said, Thy arms and thy pray arms and thy prayers have come to me for a memorial. It opened the door in heaven. The man was just doing what he wanted. He did not know much, but he was doing it. It opened the door of heaven. Learn how to open doors. Give generously. When I want to give God anything, I make sure it's generous. Because it will open the door of heaven. Be not deceived, Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived, be not mad. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall heal it. God said, I will open the heavens in degree to how you respond to me. Deuteronomy 28, verse 12. They said, the Lord shall open unto you his good treasure. The heavens will give rain. He will open unto you his good treasure. The heavens will give rain unto your land. Anything that is God, I don't measure what to give. I give until it hurts, and I keep giving until the hurt goes, and it becomes a pleasure. The offering are not measured. My investment is not measured. There is a studio we are building in this ministry now, costing us several thousands and thousands of US dollars. This church does not have the money. There's no way the church can be able to save that amount of money. But you see, I just paid it. I just, you know, and when I, when I do it, I just feel so happy that I'm setting up a studio that will help somebody else actualize their dreams. Now, there is no way I will be involved in helping somebody actualize their dream and my own dream will suffer. No way. No way could possible. Could possible. We have ordered the equipment now. I still talked to the guy in America yesterday. We are starting one of the state of art studio here in Rebecca Chapel. Anybody can go in and record life. When I was giving the money for it, I, don't, I didn't even think twice. It, it never even bothered. It was not even an issue. the day I was super abundantly blessed for me to even imagine that I spent 180 million to put into this building. 
I have never been blessed like I was during that period. It was like everybody was pursuing me with something they wanted to give me. That is when they say, goodness and mercy follow you all the days. God does not owe us anything. This is how to open the door. Open hand. Open hand will open doors. How many of you know that in the natural, if you are looking for something and you open your hand for somebody, what will happen? Open door. Am I door? Ah, kill what? Well, eh? I remember when we went to the television stations across Nigeria in January that we have a program. I had the money. New, new. 1,000. I entered the station. Everybody in the station. 1,000. 1,000. 1,000. 1,000. Ah! When I was going, the whole station followed me out. Up till today. They say, ah, they're a good man, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Come again, no. Come again, no. Do you think I will come to that place and I need something that they say is not available? Could possible. A man's gift will make room for him. Open hand will bleed to open door. I'm a traveling minister. When I go to churches, when I'm going there, I know do you know One more perfume, no more for your woman. Oh, my church, be making love for God. Oh, go for a quick part of the job. If not, what you get on the electron. Some of us don't know this. This wisdom is not bribery; it is appreciation, family support, thanking them for their good gestures. <laughs> open hand, open doors. You want door to open? Open your hand first. God's word did not say wait until you get before you give. He said give and it shall be given to you. You initiate it and it will be given to you. One more. Let me just give you this one. Then we'll close. Are you getting anything out of this? How to open a wholesome tongue will open doors. Wholesome tongue will open doors in heaven. One thing God is always listening to is what you have to say. Just like a forward tongue will close the door, a wholesome tongue will open the door. Proverbs 15 verse 4. A wholesome tongue is the tree of life. Powerlessness, dealing is a bridge in the spirit. When your mouth is used well, doors open. Death and life, Proverbs 18, 20, are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Numbers 14, 28, as long as I live, as you have spoken in my ears, he says, so will I do. God said, I will do what you say. So say what you want him to do. Hosea 14, verse 2, take with you words and turn to God. Isaiah 29, 21, he said, they made you an offender. Words will open the door. Right words. Just like words can close the door. John chapter 6, I mean Job chapter 6 verse 24. Teach me and I will hold my tongue and cause me to see wherein I've heard. How forcible, verse 25, how forcible are right words. Proverbs 25, 11, as an apple of gold in a picture of silver, so is a word that is fitly spoken. Words open. They open the door of heaven. Do you know that was how the door to salvation was opened for you? Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believed unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. When you confess Jesus Christ as Lord, the door of heaven was open and you were admitted. It was the words of Abraham's mouth that opened the door to fruitfulness, having a baby. He called those things that be not as though they were and they became. Hosea, I mean, 
Hebrews 13 verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That you may boldly say, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Your mouth will open doors. Just like your mouth can shut doors. Matthew 12, 37. By your words, you are justified. By your words, you are condemned. There is he that speaketh like the pierces of the sword. Proverbs 12, 18. The tongue of the wise is held to their flesh. Proverbs 6, 2. You are sneered by the words of your mouth. You are held captive by the words of your lips. How can I open the door of heaven? Speak the word. Speak the word. Let your speech. Colossians 4, 6. Be with grace. Seasoned with salt. My eyes are over you. My ears are inclined. God said, I want to hear what you have to say. I want to hear what you are going to say. How forcible are right words. Psalm 141 verse 3. Set a watch, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Psalm 34 verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear and be glad. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. God said this to me. He said I'm always listening to what you have to say. He said when things are right, I'm listening to what you say. When things are wrong, I'm listening to what you say. When things work your way, I'm listening to what you say. When things are not working your way, I listen to what you say. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, yet I will rejoice. Give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto your name. O most high, to show forth the loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness all through the day. There are many things God may not have done, but there are so many things God has done. I'm going to be grateful for what he has done and wait patiently because he who did that will do this too. I'm not in a hurry to judge God. I'm not in a hurry to abandon him. I'm not in a hurry to forsake him. I'm not in a hurry to throw in the towel. I will bless the Lord. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. That is one way you can confuse the devil. When things are not working, I say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We have no love that you have been kindness, O oh Lord. In the midst of thy temple. According to thy name, O oh God. So he is thy prayer. We, I remember we went to Scotland some years ago and we had this terrible accident. And I came and I said, thank you Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah! And the man that was saying, ah, why are you thanking him? I said, it could have been worse than this. A man who had three teeth left in his head. Three teeth left in his head. Two here in the corner and one here. One day, one of the people who was sympathizing with him, just helping him, you know, that's what they call old people home overseas. So went to him and he saw that the man was in a very good spirit. And he asked him, he said, ah, why are you happy today? He said, I lost one of my two today. But I'm very happy because the two in the corner with which I still bite, they are intact, opposite each other. The one that I lost is one that is standing on his own that was not useful. If one of these had been lost and two are left, they would have been useless to me. Hallelujah. John Wesley, one day he was robbed. So he came to the church to give thanks. John Wesley, he was robbed. They robbed him. They took money from him. They took his coat from him. He said, there are four things I want to give thanks to God for today. Number one, I have been hearing that they robbed. This is my first time. So I want to thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Number two, they robbed me, but what they took was not much. Hallelujah. Because before they came, the money that was real, I had taken it and hid it somewhere. Hallelujah. Number three, what they took from me was my money, not my life. Hallelujah. Then number four, I thank God because I was not the robber. It was somebody else that was the robber. Hallelujah. 
That is how to open the doors of 